Intro, go. What are we doing? Oh, the pressure. We are doing the elevator. We're continuing on the elevators today. I'm going to start assisting with dimpling. Austin will be doing... Uh, what are you doing? Something. I'll show you. So we're going to skip ahead here. I'll jump to this, I think, in the next video here. But this portion here that involves the trim cable anchor brackets. It's two steel welded pieces with a nut on it. I ordered some from iFlyRV10.com, which I think is the website name. Anyway, so we're going to skip this step here. I'll get back to that either later on in this video or the next video. And we're jumping ahead to these cover plates and access panels. So um, these here, as you can see, they're already in there mocked up and whatnot. They're going to get removed. This is where they had a little cover plate. Anyways, they're going to get removed from in there. Amanda is going to go ahead and dimple those, mm -hmm. as well as dimple nut plates. And I'm going to sit back, relax, and watch her work. No, we'll figure something else out. But anyways, getting back to it, back to building. It's a great day. Sinking uh, the 29 most inward holes on the rear spar top portion of the flange. Um, so 29 holes goes all the way out to your closeout tab, which is right here. Um, so all these have to be countersunk to accept the uh, the dimple from the skin, because on the bottom side uh, will be a piece of hinge material that'll go on the um, elevator tray. Um, so, anyways, 29 holes goes out to the closeout tab there. Verified it a couple of times, and that's what we'll be doing. I already actually knocked out the other, um, the other one over there before going on video here, because uh, I wanted to share a quick little tip that helped me immensely on the other one. And that is, when it comes to countersinking this, I remember I had to learn on a, I think, I forget which one we were countersinking previously. Anyways, found that it's easier to do it when it's kind of held rigid for you, so I'm leaving this assembly together while I'm doing it. Um, but, one thing that helps is because when you're countersink countersinking this material, it's so thin that it's easy for the uh, for the bit to lose its pilot. So countersink bits have a little pilot up front uh, that does no cutting and it kind of just holds it steady. Um, so on thinner material, it's easy to actually go beyond that and it starts to walk and your countersink begins to become like, ovalized. So what prevents that is I took a piece of scrap material, you can probably do this with, with just about anything, Scrap material, kind of held it underneath there and found a good spot, drew a little, or drilled a hole through it of the exact same size. And now I can then hold this firmly, uh, putting positive pressure on it. And it allows that pilot bit to not want to wander. Um, I saw online some people actually, they said they clamped theirs in place, um, but I had good success just kind of holding it really, really tight. And I'll do one for example real quick here. I'll try to get you a, a close shot. Yeah, so you literally just have to take this material here, line it up underneath there, and take your countersinker, get it set. And it holds it nice and steady. These ones on the edge are harder to do. It ends up, this can have the, uh, the option of kind of rolling over that edge, which is what causes that chatter there. Um, but on a nice smooth surface like these here, I have a pretty good success rate of minimal chatter and uh, nice and straight countersink. Alright, so I wanted to mention this really quick here. Um, I think I mentioned it in the rudder build, but if you missed that one, I'll mention it here. Uh, when it comes to these trailing edge wedges here, they end up having to be uh, countersunk on both sides to accept the dimple on the skin. 
Um, so this is where the, the two pieces of material meet at the very back end of the elevator. It's kind of cool in the fan there. Um, anyways, it has to, uh, or it's, it's kind of difficult to maintain a, um, a perpendicular shot at it from, uh, with the countersink. It tends to want to walk, like if you don't have any kind of guide on the back end, um, it tends to want to walk and move, and you'll see that the countersink itself um, actually meets at the, at the thin end of the, end of the material there. So that edge there weakens and it allows, it allows that countersink cutter to kind of walk and start pushing forward towards the edge. So what I did on the rudder build uh, was actually took a piece of, this is like that cheapo um, carpet transition strip stuff uh, for homes. Anyways, the previous owner of the house left some behind. Um, so it ends up being the perfect angle um, to not only hold the piece of material um, at that at perfect angle where I can get a really nice straight shot at it with the, uh, with the countersinker, but also it holds it up off the table just high enough to leave Clicos in. The reason why that's important is I'll, I left these last three here to get on camera, um, but let me see if I can get this lined up here. What it does, it allows the, uh, oh, first of all, you'll see they've all been, all been natural to that to that, uh, that trailing edge there. Uh, so it's all, all been natural. Ignore the 1 8 hole one. That was from a, a mess up I did on, on the trailing edge on the rudder where I had to go up one size. So ignore that one. Um, but these here are what I've, what I've been working with on this one since I have not had any mess ups. Um, so what it does is it allows you to, number one, click the first one in there, click the one at the very end. And then what that does, is it uses this piece of material here now as a guide going all the way through because you know that you're going to get through that through that countersink into the other one. The material is getting weakened and it's going to want to push. So this keeps that from happening because it's not going to cut through this thicker material. And also, this keeps it perfectly just high enough to clear the clicos on the work table. So I can really lean into it and uh, not worry about this jamming into the table. So anyways. Carpet transition strip, super helpful. Uh, I'll do these last three real quick here, but it makes things so easy. I know there's someone out there who sells like a aluminum block that's milled to the perfect angle. Like, yeah, you could probably buy one of those, but this is probably $5 at, uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot, um, or just rip one up in your house. But it makes it super quick. are all done and I'll show you real quick it also prevents the chattering so it's very very common for me at least uh, to have this countersink cutter want to chatter when it's not a solid surface that you're working on once that chatter starts it really can just eat up the material and make it look ugly so every once in a while you'll still hear a little bit of a chatter um, but I mean I think it it leaves a really nice surface a really nice countersink so let me see if I can get this in frame um, but you'll see here, they're all really, really pretty uh, countersinks and they're just the right amount. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I would definitely recommend you either purchase one of those blocks that that person sells. I'm sure you can probably just Google it or search on Vans Air Force or I think it was on, on Facebook somewhere. Um, yeah, you could buy one if you wanted to, but man, you can cut and get a, uh, just a regular old piece of carpet transition. Uh, cover plate and you'll be good to go. So anyways, I'll shut up and get back to working here. Um, next step, I jumped a little bit ahead to do this just because I like getting all the shavings and everything done and out of the way, clean up the work surface um, and then get to skin. So we'll jump into dimpling. Not sure if I'll show that on video or not. It's pretty boring, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, we'll get to it and start building this airplane part. dimpling uh, these two or the foremost and rearmost spars uh, for the elevators and came across something that should help out um, at least helped out with me uh, when it comes to dimpling these uh, these smaller tighter areas 
Please ignore the fan noise. I think I'm about to go right into the uh, the noise of that swamp cooler. I'm not going to turn it off because that is providing life support here in the garage in Phoenix. Um, so, getting two things here, um, kind of like a similar video where um, I think it was early on in the vertical stabilizer. Uh, but there's certain parts where it's hard to get clearance for the tooling uh, or for the um, the top portion there, the female portion for the um, the dimple dies. So, best way to go about doing things here. Hopefully, this will makes sense right here um, the best way I have found is to creep up on it so you have to come in from the outside and real slowly and I'm trying to do this while holding a camera and dealing with this part here so bear with me uh, but you kind of have to sneak up on it make sure that die lands inside and then you're good to go to chunk it um, so you do have to sneak up on it so earlier I was trying this whole method of like holding it in front of my face and holding the tool and doing this whole thing of holding this the whole time uh, which gets old and it gets heavy it gets heavy after a while so anyways learn something that should help out so this height there is pretty much dead on with the height of those nipples you still want to be careful when doing this um, but it lines up really really well to where you can kind of get it started and I'm the fact that I'm doing this one hand, it kind of shows that it works out. But kind of get it started, start chasing that hole in, make sure you're lined up, and good to go. So do it this way. Don't try doing it the method of holding it in one hand, holding the tool, or holding the, the part, and doing this whole deal of getting the shoulder workout. Put it on the table, it makes things a whole lot easier. So yeah, I'm gonna finish knocking out this one. I'll finish doing the dimples and the, uh, the flanges of these spars here. And I don't think I'll get that on video. I don't think it'll be too, uh, too enjoyable. It's just regular dimpling. Um, but anyways, we'll catch back up with you in the future. Perfect. Yeah. So we're up to step number two on 9-10. You will see that I, let's see if I can get this microphone around to me. I apologize for the loud uh, fan noise, um, but you'll see I went ahead and uh, primed these, these outer parts here. These are the ones in the previous video that I mentioned. Um, came from vans already scuffed up and whatnot. So I fully primer them with self etching primer um, But yeah, we're ready to move forward ready to start riveting So I'm gonna put you on the stand here and we'll get right to it All right, so real quick here, um, I'm sure you possibly noticed that if I was doing a time lapse just now. I'm not sure I'm going to edit this after the fact, um, but let me see if I can get this out of the wind. Hopefully that wind isn't too noisy. Um, but what I had to do was slightly bend out this flange here to make room for uh, the bottom portion there to fit through. Um, if I didn't do that, I think I would probably have to buck all these rivets by hand, and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to hit it on accident and cause it to bend or anything just because it's a tiny little part it's gonna be kind of hard to hold steady so anyways bent that out real quick just using uh her regular old called, uh, whatever the lineman pliers whatever those are called anyways put a little tape on it to pr protect the uh the primer coating bent it out i'll bend it back after i'm not worried about that uh, since i'm just bending it once or twice and calling it a day
this from Cleveland Aircraft Tools. Um, in this section in the manual, it actually says, uh, gives you instructions to create one of these. It would be kind of hard to create. Uh, it has an, an angle, which I'll, I'm gonna move the camera around here shortly to kind of show you how it matches up with it. Um, but that, the whole idea here is, let me uh, actually move this camera around now. Uh, but basically when it comes to this, this mic around and hopefully it'll uh, prevent having too much of that swamp floor noise. Um, but anyways, when it gets to this trailing edge here, we're having to rivet this top portion. The other side was already done uh, previously using just a standard bucking bar from the other side since you can easily access it. This here you won't easily be able to access underneath there with a small bucking bar. So the idea here, here comes the wind noise, um, but the idea here is this is able to slip underneath slip underneath there and you're able to locate the rivet and then sink that ribbon in there. So one thing I wanted to cover real quick here, I know these are not how-to guides, but learning from my mistakes. So if you look here on that one, that was my very first one that I sunk. And it's got a little bit of a dent. And the reason why that happened uh, was because when I was there sinking that ribbon in, I was allowing this to be dead centered on it. And what that was doing is it was, yes, it was hitting the ribbon, uh, but you'll see it's going to interact or interfere with this sheet coming out here that's flexing outwards. So it just really kissed the side of it. And I think that's why in the, in the instructions it says to start on the bottom skin first. So this is the left elevator bottom skin. So you'll never see this um, unless any of you watching are going to crawl around under the airplane and inspect it for me. You'll never see that little bend. So super smart to definitely start with the bottom skin here. On the other one, we'll be doing it actually on a top skin, so it'll be far more crucial. Uh, but yeah, summed up the way this works is uh, I did this similar method to before as far as making that bumper um, to number one, prevent scuffs on the back side of that, uh, of that uh, spar web there, as well as to kind of distance it from the little bit of a radius it has. So put a little bit of a bumper there, just kind of took tape and folded over itself a couple of times. Frame there. Anyways, fold the tape over a couple of times and made a little bit of a bumper and it helps to kind of cradle that rivet. So the idea here is you can throw a rivet in there. I'm going to locate it real quick with this. And the bumper lets me just shove it straight to the back because I know that I know it's going to push it away and kind of bring that surface right up to it where it needs to be. So find the rivet, hold it there. pretty looking rivets. Uh, there's no way to actually really get in there and test them, so I'm just having to compare it to the bottom run. I did before I put the skin on, I checked it with the uh, with the gauge, so visually matching it up with the ones on the other side, because I know those are good. And yeah, making pretty solid rivets here, so I'm gonna keep going. I guess I'll keep this filming. I've been doing a little bit less of the whole time-lapse thing, or up close time-lapse, but hey, I'll do a quick little time-lapse finishing up the rest of these rivets here. And we'll jump ahead and see you in the future. Welcome back. Uh, so it's been quite a bit since I've done any recording. I did a lot of this, um, all of these rivets here off camera because um, they were kind of frustrating to get to. But overall, was able to uh, get things figured out. The big frustrating part, um, which I'll probably get to in another video later on, um, is regarding the rivet squeezer that I had. Uh, or not rivet squeezer, ri rivet puller uh, for blind rivets. So I had this one here from Harbor Freight. It has worked well the whole time. Let's see if I can get this straight. It's worked well the whole time, but um, very recently it started having issues with grabbing the actual um, 
I guess shank, whatever you call that, the shank of the uh, popper, where it would just let go of it. Um, and where that was an issue was doing um, these here, which I believe are MK319 BS rivets, uh, but countersunk rivets. Um, yeah, so what it was doing was I would get one pull out of it, go to release it, it would let go of the, of the shank, and it would just drop inside. And it would only be a half set rivet, so then I'd go to try to drill it out, and since it was a half set rivet, it would just spin and spin and spin and spin and it just caused major issues. So yeah, not sure if, if Karma from Harbor Freight has just gotten to me of buying cheap tools and yeah, it's just weird. So anyways, burned through quite a bit of these, uh, these rivets. I'm actually uh, missing, missing rivets. So I had to order some from Van. So I have those coming in hopefully this next week to finish off these two here. Uh, but I probably destroyed six or so of those rivets. Um, so it did end up going ahead and getting this bad boy here, which made it so easy. I mean, it's just so easy to use. Um, I'll probably do a video on that in the future, just on some quirks with it and getting it squared away. Um, if you're wondering why this is on there, this nice little cape, uh, it sprays oil all over the place. So I'll get to that in a later video probably, um, but that's just there because it sprays oil um, as, it, uh, as you release that there, you'll see it here. It sprays oil everywhere if you have it oiled up. Anywho, getting back to things here, this is pretty much all riveted, ready to go. Um, you'll see the only ones missing are where I have Clecos here. So uh, these two here, and actually, yeah, it's just two. <laughs> Anyways, I'm uh, also low on rivets here. So these, I believe, are LP4 LP3 4, I think is the name of those. Anyways, have these on order from Vans as well as those. Uh, those flush rivets on order from Vans as well. Not super crucial. I'll be able to uh, continue with the build here, moving on to the next steps. Uh, but next steps on that topic, we'll be cutting down these foam blocks here. So off of camera, again, you'll find that that was a theme with, with a lot of this here, <laughs> just due to when you're frustrated on things building, you don't want a camera in front of your face. Um, so yeah, I did some of this stuff off camera. This one wasn't really frustrating. This one was really straightforward. Picked up some cheapo Elmer spray adhesive from Walmart and sprayed it on the paper. And what we'll be doing here is cutting these down on the bandsaw. And these will eventually then live inside of the front portion here um, as supports. Um, so it'll stiffen it up there and there. And we'll have one there and there as well. You see on the inside, uh, it'll be hard to see. But anyways, I already have it scuffed up where I scuffed up where it belongs. We'll get that. Uh, Pro seal uh, tank sealant, get that sealed in there, glued in there, and move on to the next step. So I'll put, probably put you on a tripod, get some kind of an action shot here of cutting those down to the bandsaw, and we'll get to it. Alrighty, so those foam blocks are shaped down, ready to go. I have this all stationed, ready to go. We're gonna be moving into uh, the tank sealant part, um, or uh, pro seal. Um, so we'll be, what we'll be doing is applying, and first of all, apologize for that noise, I'm not turning that off, it is way too hot in here. Uh, but what we'll do is apply Pro Seal to stick these inside of their uh, respective places here, which I'll give you a quick little peek of. Um, you should see where I scuffed a line all the way back there, as well as there. Um, so anywho, those are gonna be Pro Sealed in those sections, um, as well as Pro Seal on uh, this front wedge as well and it'll all be put together. So it's gonna be kind of hard to film here. I'll, what I'll do is I'll try to put this in a spot that'll have a wide enough angle and maybe I'll move it, maybe I won't. Uh, the hard part about this is once I start, it's, uh, there's, there's no going back and it's incredibly messy to work with.
Alrighty, so hopefully that time lapse got the remainder of that footage. I know it died uh, when I was over on that one there, but hopefully the uh, wireless camera up there helped to uh, at least provide some insight as far as how, how things went. Overall, it went really smooth. Um, one thing that I didn't mention is uh, regarding the uh, tank sealant that I originally had from Van. So this was in the freezer. Um, it's, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier in the, in the video, uh, but I stored this in the freezer. This was from the rudder build. I thought it would work. It ended up being fully cured by the time I went to use it. So not sure if I did something wrong there or if it just needs to be colder, but yeah, I was in the freezer from that rudder build until now and went to use it. It was already cured. Uh, it was kind of a bummer. I was all ready to go, had my whole setup here. Um, but anywho, I knew it would take a little bit to get from Vans. Vans can be a little bit slow with shipping lately, just with the amount of orders they're getting and all the chaos that happens up in Oregon uh, with the fires in the past, this heat wave they got. I know there's been a lot, a lot of stuff against them in this world. Um, so anyways, I bought it from, I ended up getting, um, buying the same stuff from Aircraft Spruce. Uh, so they had the same exact stuff that I ordered from Vans, so the CS. 3204B2. Um, they had the same stuff, ordered it from them. I think it was a little bit more expensive than ordering from Vans, but the nice thing was I got it in less than 24 hours. Um, so here I'm here in Phoenix. It looks like they have a distribution center in Chandler. So I actually ended up getting it in under 24 hours, which was beautiful. Um, so I was able to get this done here. It's curing. The garage is nice and toasty warm. It's kind of like a powder coating oven in here. It's 94 degrees right now. Um, so yeah, this went really well. And I ended up also getting in uh, a previous order from Vans. I think earlier in the videos, I think in this video here, I mentioned that I had to order some extra rivets. So I have all that here. Ended up only taking about a week and a half, which was awesome. So I saw the charge come through on the 4th of July. So sounds like they were working their butts off. I mean, if, they, if the charge came through on 4th of July when they shipped it out, people were working. They're trying to move stuff, um, so happy to have those. Ended up throwing those rivets in their, uh, in their places, not sure which one it was, uh, but threw in those two remaining rivets on the backside, and then as soon as this cures, I'll be able to flip things over and get the other two, other two rivets set in. I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Adios.